Good morning and welcome to First Church United Methodist of South Charleston, West Virginia. This is Sunday, May the 31st, and as you can see, we are in our red because it's Pentecost Sunday. If you forgot to wear your red, here's good news. You're probably at home, so you have time to go get something red on, a hat, a scarf, gloves, shirt, whatever. We'll pause for a moment so you can do that. Just kidding. And now, will you please join me in the call to worship? Come, let us bless the Lord who commands the wind. Come, let us worship the three in one who appoints fire and flame as messengers. Come, let us bless our great and glorious maker, giver of all good gifts. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23, and also the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And from John 7. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Word of God for the people of God. Good morning. How do you celebrate your birthday? Do you have a birthday cake with candles? Do you have party and invite friends? Do you hand out party favors? I have a party favor right here, bubbles. Birthdays celebrate the day on which you were born and celebrate you becoming another year older, which isn't always a good thing. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is like a birthday party for the church. Each year we celebrate Pentecost just like you would celebrate your birthday each year. It's time to remember how God powerfully sent his Holy Spirit as the promised helper. We celebrate each year and remember the way the church was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you have a party, do you send out invitations? Do you invite only friends your age? When the birthday party of the Pentecost happened, God's Spirit blew like a wind into e onto everybody there, both old and young, people of all ages. They saw little flames of fire above their heads. The Holy Spirit filled all of them. They began talking about what had happened in many different languages, and all the people from different lands understood all that was said. The Spirit was poured out onto every nation and every language. That tells us that God is with all people, no matter what language they speak. That means that there is room for all people in the church. It was the birthday of the New Testament church. When the church has a party, everyone's invited. When you go to a birthday party, either you get or give a gift. What is amazing is that we all have been given the gift of the Spirit. We don't keep this gift to ourselves. We share this gift of the Holy Spirit with everyone we meet to show them Jesus' love. To celebrate his birthday, let's all blow bubbles from our bottle. Red reminds us of the flames that were present. On Pentecost, a great big wind filled the place where the disciples were once they experience the Holy Spirit. We're going to play with the wind while we blow bubbles. Let's blow our wind, blow wind into our bubble wands as we say amen at the end of our prayer to send it on its way. Let's bow our heads. God, thank you for the birthday of the church. Thank you that the church has room for every person and people like me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, Amen. Let's blow our bubbles. There we go. And now abide a faith, hope and love, but the grace of these is love. Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost, taught by Thee, we covet most all Thy gifts that Christ, holy heavenly love, love is kind and suffers long, love is me. 
and thinks no wrong Love and death itself more strong Therefore give us love And now abide of faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, faith and hope and love we see. Joining hand and hand agree, but the greatest of the three and the best is love. Faith will vanish. shine more bright therefore give us love and now abide a faith hope and love but the greatest of of the greatest of these is love. This is the day that we're handed the keys. This is the day the church is empowered to do the work that it was created to do. This is the whole making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world thing. We can't do this without the help of the Spirit. We can't do this without God's hand on everything that we do. We need Pentecost, if only to remind us that all we do is by the power of and the presence of God. The truth is, Pentecost is a rather difficult event to describe. Oh, I can tell you the story, I can read the account, and there might even be an oh my in the crowd. There might even be some, well, how about that? It'll be some type of a response that might come from you, but in the end, it doesn't really do much for us. In the end, it's about a one-time event that we look back upon somewhat wistfully. Wouldn't that have been cool, we think? Back then, things were different. God seemed closer, more real somehow. But that was then. Now it's a lot quieter or maybe a little noisier. It's quieter on the divine side and quite noisier on our side. When was the last time that you were amazed and astonished by something that God was doing in your life? When was the last time that you were blown away by the presence of the Spirit? It seems like all of that sort of experience is left for others for the heroes of the faith, for those who profess a Pentecostal faith that seems wrapped up in signs and wonders and is woefully out of touch with how the real world works. Our story is in two parts. The first four verses tells us of the coming of the Spirit on that little band of followers who had lost their way 
when they lost their leader. Only four verses function as the fulcrum around which the whole story of the church pivots. Before that, these twelve did almost everything wrong. They missed the point, they ran, they hid, they got in the way. They didn't score too well on the discipline aptitude test. Before this moment in the story, you just know that if Jesus was serious about leaving the whole church thing in their hands, well, disaster was going to follow. And then something did happen. Something noisy, like a violent wind, more like a tornado that sounded like a freight train roaring through the room. Something that gives a simple choice, either get out of the way or get on board. Then tongues. Luke says tongues as of fire, divided, meaning coming from a common source and then dividing and spreading out among each that it was able to touch. And these tongues, these fire-like branches, rested on each one of them. Rested. Sounds like an odd way to put it. Rested on each one of them. Not dove right down into the core, not cut through to where the soul and the spirit meet, joints and marrow and cleansing them like a purifying fire, washing them like fuller soap. The sound was violent and the tongues rested. And what was the result of the resting flames? What did it do to them or do for them? Well, Luke says they could speak new languages. When the Spirit comes, we can speak in languages that we didn't even know we knew. Now, instead of languages of hurt and anger and revenge, we become fluent in forgiveness and reconciliation. Instead of limitation and doubt and anxiety, we speak with hope and joy, just like we're the natives. Instead of an accusation or blame, love falls off of our tongues as though we were born to it, with a perfect accent as though it was all a part of us from the very beginning. Then the second part of the story is what spills out into the streets. Now that's when you know that it's a really good party. When you can't contain it in a particular house or a courtyard. At this Pentecost party, the neighbors complained. There were those who wondered when this new language was spoken and exactly what it meant. They were suspicious and they were afraid to risk responding to it. They said things like, well, they've got to be drunk. You think that this can be fixed. This can be forgiven. Well, if you did, they thought you were out of your mind. And maybe we are. We'll have to admit, out of our minds that keeps us from speaking this language before, out of our minds that warned of only revenge, they wanted only to lick their wounds and to out in the darkness. We're out of our minds because that's what the Spirit drove us out. Drove us out into the wilderness of living in a world that sometimes hurts us, sometimes even rejects us. But then the Spirit gave us words to say, a language to live out. And so we do. In fits and in starts, and sometimes not knowing exactly what we're doing, but we do it. At this Pentecost party, the neighbors complained. Some were cynical and sarcastic, but there were just as many that were curious. Some passing by wanted to join in. They were peering in the windows, hoping for some of what they were having inside. They were amazed. They were captured. They saw something beyond the surface. Some of them did anyway, not all. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
but only some. Maybe things weren't closer to God in those days. Maybe it just seems that way because they find a God excuse or a God explanation for everything that happens. Maybe if we decided to start looking deeper into everything that happens, we would realize that the Spirit is closer than we realize. We think we're alone because we don't hear the freight train, but the Spirit is resting on us. It's close as a breath. It's close as a heartbeat. In the story of Acts in the second chapter is the reminder that the church is still important. The church is still relevant in the needs of today. The church is instrumental to the purpose of God in Jesus Christ. Namely, as Paul reminds us, the reconciliation of the world. What is amazing is that we have been given the Spirit not as a gift to keep to ourselves, but to use it to remake the world into that kingdom. What is astonishing is that no matter how inept we feel at the task, the Spirit keeps resting on us as if we were the means of providing the comfort, as if we were the place of divine hospitality, as if we were entertaining angels and didn't even know it. Pentecost still has something to say. It is a world of comfort and a word of inspiration. It is a call to action and a reminder of a presence. Then the real question is whether because of Pentecost do we have something to say to the world? Is it in the way we look at Pentecost or is it in the way that we live as disciples of Jesus Christ? Pentecost is the birthday of the church, and we celebrate those things. Balloons, red colors, birthday cakes at some places. Parties go on to say this is when the church was formed. But we too often forget that this is when the Spirit was introduced into the world. As Jesus was getting ready to leave and reclaim his throne in glory, the power of the Holy Spirit, that ability for humans to take the given gift of grace and love that God provides and expand it in a world that so desperately needs it, not only then, but today as well. Many of the same battles that Jesus fought when he walked in this world are going on again today, and we are in the position to expand the love the forgiveness, and the total acceptance of all those around us in the name of Jesus Christ as we take on the responsibility that is ours to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. As tithes and offerings continue to come to the church in various forms while we are all secluded in our homes and trying to find ways of readjusting to the outside world, I continue to give you thanks for these offerings continue to do the business of the church in reaching into our programs and our mission sites and going all the way around the world as we continue to support the efforts of the United Methodist Church. As we celebrate that offering and your gifts of kindness, let us pray. Holy God, thank you for sending your Spirit, the Spirit of the risen Christ from heaven. Help us be like the early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of faith, hope, and love. 
May our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness to your grace and mercy. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to your good purposes in the world through our church's mission by the power of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I'd like to share with you our prayer request for this week. We are asked to pray for Bonnie Eskew, the wife of former pastor Wendell Eskew. Also, please keep in your prayers a cousin of my daughter Natalie's, Demetrius Price. Also, please continue to pray for Joanne Steele and family. Karen Johnson still requests prayers for her friend Lori Kasdorf, Kathy Parsons' son-in-law, Robbie Lovejoy. Crystal Crouch asks for prayers for two of her friends, Karen, who had surgery Wednesday of this past week, and Aaron Coates, who is headed to the Cleveland Clinic. Also, please remember the family of Gail Bird, Tony Brown, Carolyn Brogan Purdue, the Ratliff family, Bud Anderson, and Pat Burchett. Let us pray. Lord, as we continue our time of seclusion and our times of keeping safe distance, we do so knowing that you are right there with us, that your strength and guidance continue, and that your hand is involved in finding the cure to this pandemic and death sentence. We know that we are challenged to do no harm, but yet continue to do all the good we can. And we do so sometimes from afar. But we know that in whatever our situation, that prayer to you is a way of calming our souls and knowing that your hand, your grace, your mercy are at the other end. Lord, we lift up names of those who are friends, maybe family, those that are dear to us and those that we love, and we also name those that may only be that, a name, the faceless ones that are on the front line, first responders, doctors and nurses, ambulance drivers, police, firefighters, all of those who continue to do their jobs at great risk to themselves because that is who they are. And Lord, in all things, we give thanks for Jesus. The example that you sent to us, the very gift of one who loved and who gave his all. He taught us to pray the same as he taught his disciples when he said, When you pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you in the celebration of this day, remind you of the desire and the ability that each and every one of you have when it comes to making disciples for Jesus Christ. Go now with God's grace and peace. Amen. <laughs>